The Old Testament reading, Malachi 3, 13 through 18. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord, but you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as in the morning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant, blessed, evildoers, not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him and of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of the hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man who spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual of <clears throat> Revelation 7, 14b, the Psalms 84, 5. Gradual, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you and whose heart are on the highways to Zion. The epistle is from Colossians 1, 13 through 20. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And, he's be and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in every he might be preeminent. For in him all of the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to of all things, whether on earth or in heaven, heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. for this Christ the King Sunday is found in St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say, To the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the Christ, the, the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. 
One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we worship you, we bow down to you, we kneel before you today and worship you because you are king over all. You have won your crown of glory. You preside over all rulers and dominions and powers. Nothing happens uh, without your divine providence and will. We pray that you would speak to us today. That you would come down alongside of us through the spirit of truth, through your word, and touch our hearts. And where we need to be corrected, correct us. Where we need to be strengthened, strengthen us, where we are to be commended, commend us, so that we may leave this place knowing that we are your people on a divine mission to your glory and our honor. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we have been through, uh, I think, a time of tribulation in our country. 
We've been through probably the most contentious election that I have ever experienced in my lifetime and probably in the history of our country. Lots of things have been said. Lots of mud has been slung. Um, one candidate says that they are going to go high and they go low. And when the other candidate goes low, the other one seems to, be, to go lower. And to me, it was a pretty ugly, ugly time. And then, uh, over and above that, we have the talking heads who think they have it all figured out. And sometimes I think they almost incite anger and confusion and um, even sling more mud sometimes than the candidates themselves. Sometimes after hearing the debates and um, the talking heads debate, I don't know about you, but I feel like taking a shower <laughs> and just washing off all the noxiousness. Um, we, I think, deserve better. We yearn for a ruler who is noble and kind and um, a statesman who doesn't have any dirty laundry or skeletons in the closet that um, the press can pull out at just the right time. Um, and um, we don't want to feel like we've put our trust in someone who turns around and betrays that trust. Someone like maybe old Abe, but I'm afraid even old Abe had some warts and some blemishes himself. None of us, no leader here on earth is um, perfect and above reproach. But I am very proud and happy to present to you a leader, more than a leader, a king who is above reproach, the Pantocrator, Jesus Christ. And by the way, this picture that you see here in front of you today, it's a mosaic. It was placed into the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, Turkey. The Hagia Sophia was at one time the center of Christendom um, in Turkey. Um, but the history is for another time. It's a beautiful picture of Christos Pantocrator the great King of kings and Lord of lords and creator of all things. And so I want to present him to you today. He is noble. He is righteous. He is the one that all hearts yearn for. So many people think that they will find peace on earth and happiness and prosperity through some human ruler and that is just not true but we can find fulfillment and joy in Christ Pantocrator. I want to present him to you in such a way today that you will see who he truly is that your heart will be warmed through the knowledge of him and I want to present him in three different ways. I want to give you a multi-dimensional understanding of Jesus Christ. And so first of all, I would um, commend to your understanding and thinking that he is a gory king. He is first of all a gory king. He was... Can you put up the volume just a little bit? I had the volume up on that. Could you put it?
put it up. I think it's 19 to 20, just a little bit. What was wondrous love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul. He was taken before the what wondrous love the is this, oh my soul. Pilot. He was beaten to a pulp. What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of Bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. and showing all the pity that they could um, muster up this poor Christ who had been so abused and as Jesus stopped he comforted these women and he told them Son of God, he is perfect. To God and to the, the, the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb who is the great I am. While millions join the theme, I will sing. think of Christ as king, but actually he was showing his kingly side, his great glory and honor, even as he did his chief work on the cross. And there on the cross, royal blood was spilled, kingly blood Rich red blood was spilled to redeem the world from death and sin and hell and to redeem you, and to make you right with God, to make me right with God. And as we look at Christ on the cross, we see a full-on picture of grace. And so Jesus Christ, I would present to you today, is not only a gory king, but he is a gracious king. And so there he is, abandoned by the Father, because he did cry out at a certain point, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He is abandoned by his own apostles and disciples. Everyone has turned on him. And most of us, when we would come into a position like that, we would be feeling very sorry for us. We wouldn't have time to think about anything, anything or anyone else. We would just be thinking of our own survival and our own selves. But this shows you the kingliness of Christ, the graciousness of Christ, as he is experiencing deep sorrow and pain. He thinks of the savage enemies that are surrounding him. And what does he say? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. They have been led astray by Satan and their flesh. And their hearts have been 
obscured by all sorts of misinformation. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That's grace. That is the epitome of grace when you are surrounded by your enemies and you don't want revenge. You want them to have forgiveness. And then Jesus turns to the thief who just a few minutes before had been taunting him, railing him, teasing him. And then he sees something in this Jesus, his reaction to the enemies that are surrounding him. He doesn't see in Jesus a desire to have a revenge. He doesn't Jesus see Jesus speaking one word in order to defend himself or to defend his own character. All Jesus is doing is pouring out grace and love. And at a certain point, this thief gets it. He understands who this Jesus really is. He sees that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And so his response to this grace is, Remember me, Lord Jesus. And Jesus turns around to him and says, You will be with me this very day in paradise. And there's a song that was written way back in the 17th century. It's in our hymnal. You might want to look it up sometime. It's number 447. It's written by Thomas Pollock. And it says, Jesus, in your dying woes, even while your lifeblood flows, craving pardon for your foes. So even as his lifeblood flows, even, even as he's going through the height of suffering and shame, He's craving pardon for his foes. Oh, that we here in the United States, we fallen sinners, would take his lead and crave pardon for our foes. Oh, that Democrats would crave pardon for Republicans and Republicans would crave pardon for Democrats and we could love one another and come together in unity. Have you ever felt estranged from your king? Have you ever felt my sins are so despicable and so shameful? How could he ever look upon me and say, you're my disciple? Have you ever felt like Judas, that you betrayed your Lord for 30 pieces of silver, and you felt so guilty that you don't even want to come into this building because you don't feel like he could ever receive you again? Have you ever felt like Peter? You're put on the spot. You needed to stand up for your Lord, but you just couldn't do it and you denied him repeatedly. The good news for us is that we have a gracious Savior. Not only one who went through gore and blood to redeem us, but a gracious Savior. And grace means that we receive, according to John, wave after wave after wave of mercy and tenderness and love that comes to us from the eternal throne of God. We have a gory king a gracious king, but also a very glorious king. It says in our epistle lesson for today, for by him all things were created. He is the Panto Krator. Everything that we see around us in heaven and earth was planned out and executed in eternity by Christ together with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And it's a beautiful, flawless creation, except it was marred by the fall. During the election, we've heard people say, oh, this person is so flawed, that person could never serve. That person is so corrupt, that person could never serve. But the fact of the matter is we're all corrupt, we're all fallen, we could never serve, we could never ever measure up, but we have that one who is holy and righteous and noble. And because 
of his perfection. That perfection covers our deficits. And because of that, we can stand and lift up our heads and come into this building and serve and love God and our neighbor. And it says, and in him all things hold together. This world is definitely fallen. And one of the signs is there are people vying for positions of power and authority and prestige. And they will do anything and everything to get there. Throw anyone under the bus. Uh, stab anyone behind the back in order to get to where they want to be. And so in this fallen world full of sinners, we see that because of this vying for power, relationships are broken. Family accord is put asunder oftentimes. Churches split apart. But Jesus Christ, the glorious king who has created all things, he holds things together. He is the cement that keeps our relationships together, that binds the church of Jesus Christ together into a one unified, harmonious fellowship around the earth. And as we go out as that one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we season this earth and we keep this earth together until Christ comes again. And he will come again. That is our hope. He will come in the clouds. He will come at the last trump. He will come at the twinkling of an eye and bring all the chaos, all the catastrophe, all the hurts, all the wars to an end. That is our hope. That, what, that is what keeps us going. And we've been called upon by our Lord Jesus Christ to be his ambassadors, to leave here and to go out and in one way or another touch people with his good news that heals and strengthens and saves and forgives. And we might get some flack for it. We might have people looking at us incredulously, but what a joy to know that we are his ambassadors and that as we go and are obedient to his command, that souls will be added to his glorious forever kingdom. We worship Christ today. He is a gory king, a gracious king, a glorious king. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Please rise. And together with all Christians, we confess our faith and the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you.